And new at 10 tonight sound from inside the courtroom. We begin with continuing coverage on the Lori Vallow Daybell murder trial. The first day of testimony after a week spent seating a jury. Prosecutors and defense attorneys laid out their cases with opening statements and the prosecution called its first couple of witnesses to the stand. Morgan Romero was at the Ada County Courthouse all day today and she brings us the biggest takeaways. Money, power, sex. The powerful words the prosecution used to describe this case in court Monday. They claim Lori Vallow Daybell would do anything to get what she wanted and would remove any obstacles that stood in her way. It's been four years. Can y'all believe that? It was all about where are the kids, where are the kids, where are the kids? And now it's about justice. Justice for JJ Vallow, Tylee Ryan, Tammy Daybell, and others connected to Lori Vallow Daybell who've lost their lives. We want a fair and honest verdict, whichever way it goes. Seeing Lori face to face on Monday was stressful for JJ's grandfather, Larry Woodcock. She looked away rather quickly. I, I just wanted to, to look in her eyes. At this point, I'm not even asking why. Her why would never be justification. And uh, so for that, uh, you know, I, I saw what I wanted to see. Monday started with opening statements. Attorneys laying out their case for the first time, outlining what they say their evidence will prove. Money, power, and sex. That's what this case is about. The defendant, Lori Vallow Daybell, used money, power, and sex, or the promise of those things, to get what she wanted. What she wanted was money, power, and sex. It didn't matter what obstacle she had to remove to get what she wanted. It didn't matter if the obstacle was a thing or a person. And if it was a person, it didn't matter who. The prosecution claimed Vallow used her religious beliefs and teachings to justify her affair with Chad Daybell and the alleged murders. Her spirit could be so evil that the person actually becomes a zombie. You can't cast a zombie out. <clears throat> but a common theme was the body had to be destroyed. Then both sides questioned witnesses on the stand and prosecutors presented evidence. Some of what we saw and heard today was sensitive and graphic. The prosecution showed photos of how Lori's adopted son JJ was found in a shallow grave wrapped in garbage bags with duct tape. Her daughter Tylee's body was burned. Prosecutors also revealed for the first time Chad's wife Tammy died by asphyxiation. In their opening statements, Vallow's defense said when there's a lack of evidence, jurors should find someone not guilty, and it's on the state to prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. Cases, again, can be solved with evidence. They can be solved with lack of evidence. And when there's lack of evidence, the law calls it not guilty. They also told the jury Lori has an alibi for the deaths of her children and Tammy. She claims she wasn't in the places where they were killed. The evidence will show that Lori was a dutiful wife to Charles Vallow. They both worked hard, he at the office and she at home. She was a kind and loving mother to her children. The evidence will show that she had a particular interest in religion in the end of times as something spoken of in the Holy Bible. The prosecution called Larry's wife, JJ's grandma, Kay Woodcock, as its first witness. After her brother and Lori's husband, Charles Vallow, died in 2019, Kay testified that she became worried about JJ because, quote, Lori didn't want him anymore. In October of 2019, the Woodcocks said they hired a private investigator because they hadn't heard from JJ since early August, and they didn't know where he was. Kay said she met with Rexburg police in January 2020, as police were looking for missing JJ and Tylee. The Woodcocks were the ones who sounded the alarm with the media, not Lori. The state also called Brandon Boudreaux to the stand, the ex-husband of Lori's niece, Melanie. He became emotional at times when talking about the kids. Lori and Melanie are close and part of the same extreme religious group. Brandon testified that he was shot at on October 2nd, 2019. As we've reported, he thinks Lori's brother, Alex Cox, did it and was driving Tylee's Jeep. This was after Tylee died. The prosecution said Brandon's case got law enforcement looking into Chad and Lori and actively searching for Tylee and JJ. They say it shows Lori's scheme to get rid of people who stood in the way of her life with Chad. 
Prosecutors also presented evidence Monday, including J.J. and Tylee's birth certificates, J.J.'s adoption certificate from when the Vallos adopted him, a picture of Tylee, and a picture Kay took of J.J. She choked up when looking it over, calling him her beautiful grandson. This is not just about Tylee and J.J. This is about Charles and Tammy and, and, and others. And we know who those others are. So it's, you know, it's important. It's important for me, for myself, and for Kay that we all remember everybody in this. Larry says he plans to be here every day. Unless the good Lord's got something else that I need to do for him, yeah. And will continue pursuing justice. I'm the biggest advocate of 12 jurors and, and, a, and a, a fair and honest uh, judicial system. And I think we got it. I really do. And, and let's just continue that, that this, this will continue this way and that everybody is just speak the truth. That's all it's all about. Ballo's trial will pick back up here at the Ada County Courthouse at 8.30 Tuesday morning. The prosecution will call another witness, Rexburg Police Lead Detective Ray Ermacio. Reporting in Boise, Morgan Romero, Idaho's News Channel 7. And just a reminder, you can listen to the entire opening statements on our website, ktvb.com, or you can find it on our KTVB YouTube channel. Of course, you can catch all new inside the courtroom on KTVB+, ktvb.com, and KTVB's YouTube page. You can hear directly from our reporters who are in the courtroom on new details as the trial develops over these next several months. And you want to get live updates on the trial throughout the day sent to your phone. Our reporters, again, will be at the courthouse every day for the next couple of months or however long the proceedings last. For all of our coverage, just scan the QR code that is on your screen or check out our website, ktvb.com. Of course, the KTVB app has information as well, as well as KTVB+.